guys, it's your boy, Racy Boy, back with another video, guys. Happy, happy Wednesday, guys. Okay, guys, so I forgot to shout out, oh my God. I forgot to shout out Princess Leia, guys. I'm so sorry, Princess. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I should have shot you out in my list of people that are my loyal fans. You've been loyal to me. We're friends, we're family. Um, I support you. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for helping me with YouTube. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Don't hate me for it. I'm sorry. I'm gonna give you a shout out. I remember now. So I'm sorry and shout out to anyone else that I missed. Um, but guys, I wanted to jump on here really quick. I would do StreamYard or I would do something else, but I don't have my co-host right now because they're both sleeping. And um, anyways, I will do it later, but um, later today or tomorrow or whatever, um, maybe tonight, I don't know, late tonight or something. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what I'm dealing with in my life because I don't want to be a fake YouTuber and I want to be real. And I say that a lot in probably like thousands of my videos and people are probably like, why does he keep saying that? But I wanted to, sorry guys, my phone just slid down because of what I'm propped up on. You guys are literally propped up on my own, my iPhone case. So my iPhone box of when I got this phone. Um, but what I wanted to share with you guys, literally, and I always talk with my hands, forgive me if it drives you crazy, but that's just who I am. Uh, Okay, so lately, it's, shoot, I'm trying to think as late as, maybe like in the last, the last five months, I want to say, or four or five months, guys, I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety, and, and I've talked about it in a few videos, I've let you guys know what I'm dealing with and stuff. But right now, it's actually to the point where it's very, very, very worse. And it's kind of scary because I'm like, mm, you know, but and it's not just anxiety. It's depression. It's the unknown. It's the it's the PTSD. It's the uh, I feel like my videos are always so depressing, but I want to be real with you guys. I just want you guys to know that, like, I'm a little scared because I don't know. I preach it a lot to get help and ask for help and blah, 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 and all the stuff that I preach. But I don't want to be that type of person that preaches so much, but then doesn't walk the walk. They more preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it. And so then when the time comes for you to be like, well, Reese Boy said this, but Reese Boy's not even following his own advice. I don't want that to be the situation. I don't want you guys to be like, well, you said to do this and you're not even doing it. Like, I don't want that to be a problem. I wanted to be like, wow, okay, so I'm following what Reese Boy, what Reese Boy is doing because I've had a lot of people who are literally like watching everything I do and will get mad if I slip up. And so I'm realizing like, wow, my words really do affect people and I have to be careful with what I say and how I act and whatever. And I mean, it can even get bigger from here to where I am have a big follow and I have to be completely honest and watch what I say and watch how I treat people and I mean, it's just like but the anxiety and the depression and the stress that I'm under has nothing to do with YouTube. It really has to do with my disability. Having a disability, guys, literally, I'm so... If you don't have a disability, okay, listen. Listen up, okay? Having a disability for me, understanding that I have a disability, and for a lot of other people who have disabilities that understand that they have a disability or understand that they have a handicap or understand that they're different from a normal person. But I don't even like that saying because it's like, we all have something wrong with us, literally. God did not make one perfect person. And we all have some form of a disability. If it's a speech impediment, if it's remembering stuff, if it's the way you walk, or if it's something that happened in an accident, or it's being born with some type of defect, everybody has some type of form of disability, whatever it is, okay? They might not, it might not be as big as someone who was born and is titled mentally retarded or handicapped or, or whatever it is. Everybody has some type of form of issues. Everyone has issues. No one's a perfect person. Not anybody was a perfect person. The only two people who were perfect was Adam and Eve and they messed that up. So that's a different story for a different time. If you don't know who they are, they're in the Bible and yeah. So anyways, um, what I'm dealing with right now, and I kind of talked about it a little bit in my morning video, is, and I hate that I'm doing this, but I'm starting to hate myself in a way because the things that I want like okay how do I word this how do I word this I don't want people to be like why is he hating himself again um the things that I exact the things that I want and the things that I want to do are 
wonderful, but then you still gotta realize like, who's gonna, like, okay, we're gonna go to something that I'm that really breaks my heart and that I understand why I was with my ex for so long. Okay, listen, this is, this is what I'm realizing right now. And I have these talks with drama all the time and my sisters. My ex, yes, she did a lot of stuff, but what people don't understand is there was a good person there and there still is a good person inside, inside. I know her heart, she knows my heart. There is still a good person that has dealt with a lot in her life and just doesn't want to get help for it. And the day that she gets help is amazing and I'll be proud of her. But the reason why I stayed with her the longest time was one, she did not judge me for being overweight. She did not judge me for my reading. She did not judge me for living with my parents still and not driving and not working. She just loved me for who I was. Yes, okay, yeah, maybe she took advantage of me. Yes, she took my money. But that's besides the point. She loved me for who I was. Well, I thought she loved me for who I was, but she accepted me for who I was. That's what I can say. And my next relationship, all the girls that I've dated after her, okay, and there weren't a lot. There were probably like four, right? All they wanted was a fix. They just wanted a fix because they were like, a lot of them like just broke up with their boyfriends or just got out of a long time relationship. They just wanted a fix. And then they all were like, well, I don't want anything long term. So they weren't like committed to the relationship. And I was still do dealing with a broken heart. I was still hurting and I wasn't ready for a relationship. I was not ready, but I jumped into those because they basically fell in my lap. And I was like, whatever the heck with it, you know? But I never got to the point where I had to tell them like, look, I read at this level and you're like way up here and I'm way down here. Like my job is, would not be like, I'm, you know, I can't be a lawyer. I can't, I mean, I can, but I know my limits. I know my limits and I hate allowing that disability to make my mind. And I know it's Satan and I know it's people being negative in my ear who are saying you won't amount to stuff. But when I get into my next relationship that I hope will end up to be my wife or my or my partner for life or whatever it is, whatever the girl is to me, because technically if I get married, I lose all benefits. So we would have to just be like Oprah and Edmund who have been together since the nineties and they've never got married. I mean, like we would have to be kind of like that, never get married. And most girls want to get married. Most girls want that, that fairy tale wedding, you know, with the Prince Charming and the princess and da, 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 da. And I would love to give them that. I mean, I've had dreams about what my wedding would be. You know, I want to get married in a castle. I want to, you know, have all this, good food that I can't even eat anymore, but still just have it there, you know, but, um, you know, and have that mother, father, mother, son dance. Like I want to do that. I want to do, I want Jama to be my, like up there with me. I want my best friend, John, to be my best man. I want my ex-girlfriend's brothers to be up there because they were close to me. I want even one of my brothers to be my best man, but it's like, reality hits you. Reality hits you so hard sometimes. And like, the mind is a really scary place because the mind will play tricks on you and the mind will make you think like, this is your life, just deal with it and get over it. You know, cry me a river and get over it. It's like, I hate that I do that to myself. I hate that I let this sometimes guide me instead of making up my own de my own decisions. And I hate that, um, I'm okay. It's not that I hate, I'm more scared and aware of if I get with a girl, if I find a girlfriend, I hate saying that because it sounds so ghetto. If I get in a relationship with a girl, right, and we're 100% we're all in, right, does she want to take on this baggage of, wow, okay, so my boyfriend's just a little bit slow, but not too slow, and that she, not like she really has to like help me with everything, but just be like, hey, did you understand this? Or, you know, like, I don't want her to be like a mother and I don't need that nagging either. Like be like, be like someone that just like allows you to learn, you know, like good, you know, just be like, but still be supportive if you get what I mean. Like still be like, okay, let me, you know, he, he might take it differently. Like I'm not, I hate that I'm putting like a handicap on myself to make me seem like I'm so slow, but I'm not so slow, but it's still like, my reading's not gonna be like 100% like, okay, come on, we're gonna read this whole book together and we're gonna like start a book club. Like, no, that's not gonna happen. Unless it's online, I'm not gonna do no book club with you, okay? Um, but I hate that stress that I put in my head that like no girl's ever gonna want you because of this issue. And you don't know who God could bring into your life. You don't know who you could bump into at a store or see in a, or find, you know, you don't know who's watching you the girl that you want or the girl that you dream of or your future or whatever could be watching you on youtube could be one of your fans on youtube or social media like you don't know 
who it is. And I go back to my ex. I don't know why I talk about her a lot, but I go back to my ex. The only reason why I was in that relationship for so long was I did see a future. I did see us being married, living together, her working outside of the home, me working inside the home, taking care of our son, taking care of if we have a daughter, and me doing my photography and my YouTube, my, well, I wasn't really doing YouTube, but my photography and helping people. Like, I really saw that dream. Like, I even dreamed it a lot of nights, and I told her. I was like, this is what I want, and I was in. Um, I remember, like, the month before we broke up, I was like, look, are you all in? And she was like, yeah, and, and she lied. But still, like, I knew... And I knew this for a fact. As soon as I ended that relationship, I felt like I would never be in a relationship again. And I was right. That's almost seven years ago or six years ago. I mean, like, I knew that was going to happen. I told myself that was going to happen. That I said, as soon as I end this relationship, I will never be in a relationship that deep in love ever again. Like, I told myself that. And it might be me psyching myself out because I don't know the future. Only God knows the future. But, and then for that psychic to say that you're still in love with your ex... Maybe I am. I don't know. Like, I'm so confused. Like, it's so like, oh my gosh, guys, I'm being so vulnerable right now because I feel like I really am lost. Like, I really don't know what I want to do anymore. Like, I just don't understand reality and I don't understand the life that I'm living right now. Like, who wants to live with their parents at 31 years old? Who wants to be put way in the back of the house, treated like you're an outsider and get in arguments every single day over stupid stuff? Um, and have a brother that hates you, but has a gorgeous daughter that loves you, or like, you know, it's like, or I mean, I have gorgeous nieces and nephews, but it's like, I don't get to see them all the time. You know, it's like, who wants to be treated like the outsider, you know, like, just like, the way that I feel is like, I adore, I adore people, right? I love people 100%. And I adore, um, everybody i adore everybody I, if i if i can fill your soul and i know that that you're a good person i 100 percent adore you and love you and would be right there for you no matter what and just watching how my siblings are parenting their kids and just being like in their life and being wanting to be like the fun uncle and the cool uncle and the uncle that they can go to and be like yo uncle let's go do something you know like that's why I was so big on losing weight because I didn't want to be the fat uncle that sat in the corner and they're like, oh, well, Uncle Matt's fat. He can't do nothing. I want to be like, yo, Uncle Matt's the cool uncle. Let's go out, throw the ball. Let's let's go on an adventure, whatever it was, you know, like, oh, yo, I want Uncle Matt to come to my football game, blah, 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 like different stuff like that. Like I wanted to be that uncle, you know, and so and I want to be that type of father, too. But you got to go back to what's your handicaps. You have to understand what your disability is you you can't play it off like i do a lot of times like oh i ain't got no disability i'm good i can do this and then you have to go wait a minute no you can't you know like it's a scary thing like just from someone who has a disability who all the time wishes he was never born this way like i literally it's so funny guys i know that i preach that it's okay and that you gotta like accept who you are but Everyone says that. Everyone says that with a disability or whatever the issue is. But at the end of the day, their fight and their battle with their self and God is why did you make me this way? Every single day. Every day that they open their eyes, it's like, oh God, here we go. Another day in this messed up world. It's like, why did you make... And it's like, you are not supposed to question God at all. Like, that's one thing you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to just go with the life that God gave you and just trust him, you know? But... I just feel like I just feel like I argue with God and I've been doing this for years and it's probably another one a part of my my food my food disorder was why did he make me the way that I am okay I know what happened. My birth mother was on drugs. My birth father was on drugs. I was conceived, whatever you want to call it, one night, whatever you want to call it. And she didn't even know she was pregnant, supposedly. And she kept doing her drugs that she was doing, her like all the drugs that she was doing. And it messed up my brain. Okay, the doctors already proved it. They said it, whatever. You know, you, the reason why you have all these issues is because your mother was a drug addict. So they've already proved that. And alcoholic and all that other stuff. Thank God none of that stuff 
have been passed on to me. My other brothers all have done it. But me, it like skipped my generation or God was like, no, I'm not having him be a drug addict. But I had other issues. I got addicted to food. I got addicted to other, like, you know, it was like, I still had some type of, you know, addiction problem from her because that's just what happens when you're a child born to someone with addiction problem. Um, you get addiction in different things. It can be working out. It can be relationships. It can be TV shows. It can be anything. It can be music, food, whatever. It doesn't matter. Mine was food and people. Mine was food and people. Like I literally was in relationships that should have never been there because I was so addicted to that one person. And I think that that has ruined a lot of my friendships because I was so obsessed with this person and it was like not healthy at all. Like now that I look about it, I should have been locked up a long time ago in the loony bin because I literally would like fight with this person and this person for whatever reason knew how to break me down to the point where I was so like depressed and sad and wasn't eating wasn't talking was crying all the time and it's like this person just said I don't want to be your friend or this person was like why are you acting so weird why are you so clingy or something like that and it's like I lost so many friendships and a lot of those people to this day still think that I'm that kooky person that they met almost 15 years ago and don't even want to talk to me like it's just like it's crazy it's just crazy but like my conversations with god sometimes like i will lie here in this bed late at night like two three in the morning when my whole the whole house is quiet and i will start crying and listening to songs different stuff um and literally just be like god why did you make me this way like trying to understand like i'm not questioning him or anything i'm just like why did you make me this way like I'm 31 years old. I would be married, have kids, be working, would probably be in my career as a social worker, something, whatever I would, actor, singer, whatever I would have been doing that I would have been passionate about, not sleeping in a bed that's not mine, in a house that's not mine, and doing a tiny, I mean, there's just so much stuff that I'm just like, why, why was I dealt this card? But then you still have to be like, like, all the crap that I've been through, right? All the stuff that I've been through. I don't even know if you can say crap on YouTube, but I've said, um, all the stuff that I've been through, right? Things that have happened to me, things that are still happening to me, stuff that's like, I'm going on with, I'm such a strong person. So I feel like God always has a purpose for something. And I feel like God's purpose for me right now is to do YouTube and help minister to a lot of people and be that voice for people. And I think that, I think that he is using this platform for good so much. And I think that he is using my TikTok for good. And I feel like that's a good thing, but I still feel like I should be doing so much more. I feel like, and my sisters always tell me, Matthew, you're doing enough. Why do you feel like you need to be doing so much? And I'm like, it's the way that I was raised. And she's like, yeah, but you need to slow down because you don't want to do too much that you can't even take a breath without having to be at some appointment or some type of, you know, like you just want to be, you know, you don't want to get to a place where you can't even live your life because there's so much people watching everything you do that then that becomes depressing to you. That becomes anxiety to you. And then you're like, why did I choose this type of career? Like, that's where you want to slow down. But I'm like, I'm not even to that point yet, you know, like, I'm still such a small little engine that could baby channel right now compared to other people that have millions and millions of followers and support and all that stuff. And there was a comment actually that really pissed me off. I think it was yesterday and I actually delayed it because I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. This person had the audacity to say that I'm such a fame hungry person that I want fame so bad. And why are you trying so hard? You'll never amount to any of those status as some of these famous people because you don't have the body, the look, the hair, the skin color, the um, talent or whatever it was. And I'm just like, and again, no picture, no face, no name, just a nobody channel that just probably was sitting at home eating their chips, probably like 50 or 40 year old man, probably living in his parents' basement, want to attack somebody who's trying. And that's where I'm just like, wow, pathetic. But at the same time, I could have commented and I could have been really rude, but I just deleted it. I'm like, I ain't got to deal with this. I'm, and I deleted it. Um, but just know if you're a parent of a child with a disability, right? And listen to me, guys. Your child is going to go through a lot, a lot in their life. If they're not going through it already, depending on what age they are. 
they're definitely going to 100% have anxiety and depression. I'm just telling you straight off the back, okay? They're going to have some type of depression and anxiety because the world will mess with their head. And depending on who is taking care of them, will try to do the best that they can do, but they're still going to have a lot of that negativity in their ear and they're going to hear it, not from you and not from who their caregiver is, just from the outside world. When people are, why does he look like that? Why does he act like that? Oh my God, I'm scared of him. Like kids in school now today are so mean to people with disabilities. They look at you weird. They run away. The kid might have a crush on the really pretty girl in school or something. And then the kid is like, the girl is so rude to him and like, no, no way. And then like push him away or something. Or he might be being bullied at school, but scared to tell you at home because he feels like he has no outlet. Like, I mean, there's so much that happens to these kids with disabilities in the public school system. You know, like I remember me, I like this girl a lot. And she was like one of the prettiest girls in school. And I remember my friend was like, yo, go ask her out. And I remember I went to go ask her out and she was so rude. She's like, oh, you're not even my type. You're one of those weirdos. I see the classes that you're in and the special buses that you ride, no way. And then she w ran off with her little girl group or whatever it was laughing at me and walked down the hallway or something like that. And then like, I was just like, like it hurt. But I was like, you know what? That's your loss. And then my friend Zule was like, come on, who cares? You don't need a, you don't need someone like that. You know, she was all about her nails and her hair and her bags and her clothes and whatever. And she was like, you don't need some Barbie doll girl to go out with. You know, like, I know you think she's really pretty, but there's people who are better than you or better, better suited for you than this little Barbie trashy person that she was because she was known to, yeah, anyways. But when your mind is on, when you're stuck on something, it's like, this, it replays in your head over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And with her rejection to me like that, really messed with my head and my self-esteem. And like, like I didn't ask anyone out for like, shoot, probably like three years after that. And I remember like my senior year, I broke up with my girlfriend at that time. That I mean, I got a girlfriend like my senior, my junior year and my senior year, I got a girlfriend, but I broke up with her because she was really mean to me that day. And I was just like, I'm done. Like I better off, I'm better off being single than being in a relationship with you right now. I'm sorry I keep touching my face. It just like feels weird. I don't know why, like my allergies are so bad today. The dust in Florida is like so bad right now. It's like all of this down here burns, like literally it's burning. So that's why I keep touching my face. I'm sorry. Um. And that's why I keep squinting like I need glasses. I do need to get glasses for nighttime. The doctor already told me. Um, but again, your child is going to go through some type of anxiety and depression, especially if they're in the school system. Now, if you homeschool them, then no. But they're still going to, well, they'll still beat themselves up if they can't get the answers right. Like, definitely they will. Um, and... If you're a parent of a child with a disability, just love them. Just love them and try to understand them. Don't judge them. Don't be rude to them. Just try to understand them. And all they really need is just love. They definitely just need love. That's all they need. Love and understanding and patience. A lot of patience. Because, shoot, growing up, I did not get a lot of patience. And they would deny that and they would argue that and they would say that they did the best that they could. And yeah, they did. Technically, yeah, they did. Okay, I'll give them that. But now please that's a different story that's a different story there are literally people who don't even try to get to know me and i'm just like whatever that's your loss but i wanted to be real with you guys and let you guys know that's what i'm dealing with i'm kind of dealing with this whole why why me like i'm having pity on myself and i don't even know why i'm having pity on myself that's so pathetic but i just feel like i look at i just look at people when i'm going places and i'm looking at people and stuff and i'm just like that would be me. That would be me doing this. This would be me. Da, 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 you know, and like, I get so frustrated, so frustrated <laughs> when people have the audacity, the audacity to tell me, well, you're living off of the government. Oh, you live with your mom and dad. Well, you're lucky. And, da, 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 da. and it's just like, do you know? <laughs> do you even know? what's going on do you think i want to live here no do you think that i want to live off the government no do you think i want to have to be 
the way that I am. No, no one wants to be the way, I, no one wants to be a burden on anybody. Like that's like the biggest thing. Like when I feel like I'm being a burden on someone, I literally like do a 360 and change my whole like communication with them. And that's why I always ask drama, like, am I being a burden? Am I bothering you? Da -da -da -da. It's like, if she said that, then I would slowly like pull back and just try to not be such a burden on people because I hate that feeling because I've been told that by certain family members that I'm such a burden and I'm so naggy and I'm so clingy and I'm like, they never have time to their self or whatever. And I feel like I try to just like slowly pull back. Like I'm not going to bother you so much. I'm not going to really ask you for stuff because it's like, I don't want to be a burden. But then they get hurt because they're like, well, why didn't you ask me? Why aren't you talking to me? It's like, I just don't know how to really respond to the way you treat me or the way that you act to me, you know? But like Jama's always said, no, I would tell you and she would. So it's like, it's good, you know? But it's like, when you have people that are like, in your immediate family, they won't even tell you that. That's the part where it's just like a little hurting, like just to not be accepted by certain people. I don't know why that affects me so much, but my sister said the reason why it affects you so much is because you're such a caring person and you're such a loving person and you love people too much sometimes that it hurts. And I think that has to do with just being born different than some people. Like I, I look at it like we have our own superpower. That's what I look at it like. We have a superpower where we can, like there are people who are super, super, super smart. We'll get up there and spell the whole word backwards, frontwards and sideways. There are people who can draw amazing. People who can sing amazing. People who can do different stuff better than people who don't have a disability. It's like, I look at it as like our superpower, but I'm still struggling with the superpower because like right now I'm so stressed. It's like, I need to go to Texas to see my cousin. I need to get eyeglasses. I need to get my tooth pulled. I need to, uh, get my license. I need to do all this different stuff. So I'm pulled in so many different situations. My check is so small. I'm not working and I'm not being supported by anyone else. So it's like with money. I mean, like other people are supporting me. Like Jama gives me a lot of stuff and she does a lot for me. But I mean, like, I don't have enough money to move out and get my own apartment. I don't have a job to like do stuff and do different things. And that part is where I'm stressed out because it's like, One, I live so far from anything that would pay me enough money. Two, I can't even work full time because then you lose the benefits that you get from the government because you have to only work part time. Then I don't have a lot of friends. I literally just have Jama right now and John and Lily, but they live in a different, they live somewhere different. So I don't see them all the time. And then I don't make friends anymore. You know, I don't go out and do stuff. So I don't make friends and I don't want people to like, Hey, Matt, get ready. We're going to come pick you up. Let's go out and let's do stuff. I have like more friends right now <laughs> that I'm close to through social media. Like I don't have actual people that I can like actually give a, well, you can't give a hug right now, but actually be like, Hey, do you want to go eat and do something tonight? Meet me at, you know, meet me at Applebee's, meet me at Prenera Bread. Like I don't have friends like that. And that's really hard for me because I've had friends thousands of friends my whole life and always have been so social and always have been so friendly just to be down to like a few people it's, it's just kind of like heartbroken because it's just like wow like what what was wrong with you like that's what I feel like you know and a lot of the people that like I know who would hang out with me like Princess and Jama and John and all these different people, John and Lily and like my sister, if they lived closer to me, I wouldn't have any time to myself because we'd be so busy, you know, like we would all, they would always be trying to get us to do something, especially like helping me with my weight and helping me like, you know, different things. Like we would be doing, 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 doing stuff, especially my sister. Like she would not, like she does not sit still. She'd be like, get up. We're going to go ride bikes. Hey, we're going to go to this park. We're going to go do different stuff. We're going to go to the trail. We're going to do different stuff. Like we would be doing stuff, but they're all in their different places. And I'm not, and I know I should not just depend on people to be happy. I should be happy by myself. And honestly, guys, in the last, whatever you want to say, I've been by myself. That's the funny part. I've been by myself. I'm always by myself. Um, and that part's kind of sad too, you know, like, why am I always by myself? Am I always isolating myself? But it's the card that I'm dealt. So anyways, guys, I'm sorry that I've been running my mouth and I hope you guys get something out of this video, but that's just the truth. That's how I've been dealing and that's how I feel right now. So I love you guys. I don't even know what I want to title this video, but um, 
that's how I feel. So again, guys, shout out to Princess Leia. Sorry that I forgot you in today's video. Shout out to Jama Brown. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on my notification bell. Comment below. Let me know how you're feeling today and how you're feeling with what we're dealing with right now in the world. And let me know if this helped you in any kind of way. And I love you guys. And thank you for supporting me. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.